I'm a change maker. I have dedicated my life and my career to trying to solve some of the big problems in the world. In my professional work, I have chosen to fight for the human race. Maybe you're like me. At one point in my life, when I started Women for Women International, I was only 23 years old. I did not know what I was doing. But I researched and talked to experts and to the people I'm trying to help, and here I am. Maybe you're wondering how you might take these nine lessons and find your life's work. I'm speaking to Dr. Angela Helmers of the Task Force for Global Health, where she is the Director of Strategic and Technical Initiatives at TEFINET, the global network of 75 field epidemiology training programs strengthening public health systems across more than 100 countries. Tefina's mission is to develop, connect, and mobilize a global field epidemiology workforce to strengthen public health systems and advance health security. Also to Melinda French Gates, a philanthropist, businesswoman, and global advocate for women and girls. Through her work at the foundation over more than two decades, she has seen firsthand that empowering women and girls can bring about transformational improvements in the health and prosperity of families, communities, and societies. Her work has led her to increasingly focus on gender equity as a path to meaningful change across the globe. And to Dr. Machidi Sumawati from Botswana. She is the first woman to be elected as the World Health Organization Regional Director for Africa. Over the past five years, Dr. Moweti has led the transformation of WHO in Africa to ensure the organization is accountable, effective, and driven by results. Dr. Moweti is a public health veteran with almost 40 years of national and international experience. Hello, Angela. Hello, Melinda. Hello, Dr. Moweti. Hello, Zainab. Hello, everyone. What can our next generation of public health leaders do to get started? And what can students learn from this series of stories from global health experts on these nine lessons? We need experts to teach us and to let us push back on questions and say, no, 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 we didn't know that. We weren't sure of that. And the other thing I would say to students is, Look, I never in a million years thought I would be working in global health. And then I would say there was more than a decade, more, for sure more than a decade, where I didn't feel like I knew enough to speak out. But I underestimated what I had learned by being out in the field. When I started to realize that there's this collective wisdom in listening to other people once you've been out there and you see these things that are the same, and then you go to look for the data, and for women, the data is just not there because nobody's collected it. You start to realize that, oh my gosh, you know, this is a field that's ripe for change, and I can speak out, and I do know enough. I think competence equals confidence. Um, the way I have seen our public health officers at the local level, working at the front lines of uh, the response, once they feel competent, meaning they have learned something new, you can see a change or a switch in the way they behave and how they think that they have the confidence to contribute towards uh, strengthening their own country health system. We all have something to learn and I think we all have something to contribute to. How did you, Melinda, find the confidence in yourself to create change? I never in a million years thought I was going to work in global health nor speak up for gender equality. And I was afraid, quite frankly, to speak up for gender equity. The, the women's stuff back when I entered this field was kind of like, oh, that's a side issue. We'll measure maternal mortality, but those are the soft issues. No, these are the hardcore issues. These are the things that should be at the center of global health. Because when you solve things for women, you get money in their hands, you get a vaccine in their hands, you get a malaria medication, you get money, they change everybody around them because they're the center of the family and they invest in everybody else. But so often, because before it used to be men who are mostly in this field, we didn't look at these women's issues. And so what I want to say to anybody who's tempted to go to global health is the field is wide open and it will take you in places you never expected you had even inside of you. And you can change the life, not just of one other pe person, but of hundreds of thousands of people through the work you might do. Dr. Fagy says it best. 
One of the greatest threats to human extinction is our own fatalism. He is so right. Hope and belief in our ability to take on these massive problems is really what's required of us to become better ancestors. I believe very strongly in working in partnership, working together, supporting each other, mentoring those uh, who are coming behind you, helping people to feel enabled to do their best, to feel supported, to have the opportunity to learn and make mistakes. I, I also think it's very important not to be afraid of making mistakes. I mentor some colleagues. We, we have a program of, of uh, women leadership, mentoring some women. And one of the most important aspects of that is really being able to exchange with your peers, with your mentor openly and learn from each other. I've benefited hugely from being a mentor myself because you learn a huge amount from the people that you are mentoring as well. So I think this is extremely valuable. Thank you, Dr. Mawati. See you later. The human race stands upon a precipice. The threats to our survival multiply every day as our tiny planet hurls through a vast, unknown universe. The time is now. The time for you is now. We need more of us focused on creating positive change if our species has any hope of survival. I'm calling on you to find your inspiration to take on some of our next big challenges. <laughs>